My name is Shauna, and I'm a scruffy looking nerf herder. <laughs> guys new intro welcome to oh oh yeah and you know what for the topic this month it's uh rather relevant anyways uh welcome to the infernal brotherhood of scruffy looking nerf herders uh today we're gonna be just not me today we're gonna be discussing video games because <laughs> we're fucking cool and play video games because because we totally have wives seriously yeah yeah, we do. My wife lets me play video games, so it's, it's it's cool. It's totally not weird. So, aside from the brand new intro to this show, which is much yes. shorter, much more focused, we actually are breaking new ground this episode as well. Yes, we are. We're going to have our first guest. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, this is a gentleman who I am a fan of what he does. Uh, he has his own show. We're going to talk about that shortly, but first let us introduce Valifar. How are you, man? Hey. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Oh, Fantastic. How is everything going this evening? Good. Good. Excellent. Good. Yeah, here we're talking about Star Wars and video games, two of my favorite things. I just <laughs> like brown yeah. paper packages. Tied up a string, baby. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So. Yeah. That's weird, because I have my own version of that song that I've actually, like, performed on an old podcast that I used to run, and, and I've reworked it for a, a newer Friends uh, podcast that never ended up running, but I do genuinely love that sort of musical track to just yeah. superimpose my own language into. Um, Definitely. Yeah, m yeah. Mine had much more to do with fellatio than it ever did a brown paper bag tied up with string, but... <laughs> It was okay, still. yeah, considering the source, I'm not surprised. Huh? <laughs> no. It was still pretty good. <laughs> so, welcome to the Infernal Brotherhood of Scruffy-looking Nerf Herders. Um, of course, this is a Star Wars uh, video podcast uh, by Star Wars fans, for Star Wars fans. We talk about movies, characters, the universe, legends, the prequels. We dive into Rebels and the Clone Wars. And we do magic. And magic. <laughs> Whoa! That's a mind freak right there. Wow. Man. <laughs> uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in live. Uh, Lorcan and Lolly, I think you are the only two that have ever tuned in live, so I appreciate it. Hey, my wife totally sets up her phone and then just oh, goes true. and does something else. That's <laughs> true. But she's not said anything yet, so she's not here yet. So thank you. Slacker. Thank you for those live. <laughs> Yes, thank you. you. Guys are awesome. Um, okay, well let's let's talk about Valfar really quick because he has a uh, a video podcast that talks about. Well, how about you? It's called Idle Hands. Valfar, can you give us a rundown of what your show's about? Yeah, uh, Idle Hands is a a look at um, gaming and from from the perspective of the outside. We get a lot of hero worship. You know, it's always the good guy wins. Um, you know, uh, the the good guys dress in white, the bad guys dress in black. This, this explores more of that gray area or more of that third side perspective common in, you know, other um, uh, elite organizations and things like that. Or just, just people who live outside the norm and want something more from video games besides just the usual pow-pow, shoot em up good feelings at the end sort of thing. It's, it's an alternative, um, darker take on, on games and gaming. So Yeah. Well, if you ever do want to run into some Star Wars territory on your show, I know two guys that would love to help you with it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we can we'll get them on our show. Not me. Yeah, we'll do some crossovers. <laughs> so, no, not this guy. Not yeah, not you. You. No, I, I would totally love that. Um, Rhino, oh, good yeah. to see you, man. And Jana, how are you, my dear? I miss you. Um, okay, so we're gonna be talking about uh, video games centered around Star Wars, but I want to know your level of Star Wars nerddom. So. Let's say scale to one to ten. Where are you in the Star Wars universe here? Uh, definitely a big fan. No, not a not certainly not a purist. I would put myself at like a six five or a seven. I'm not the Star Warsiest of them, but I have a good amount of exposure to the the lore pre Disney. And um, there again, I'm a big fan of it. I'm a giant nerd sci fi stuff. So, but I, I I'm not one of the people that jumps in on the Star Wars Star Trek. 
you know, thing. I like them both. I like it all. If it's in space and there's lasers and robots, um, that's me right there. there. So, uh, yeah. No, absolutely not. And Star Wars <laughs> is an exemplary and if it one of the, you know, perennial figures of that. So, you know, yes. all respect to Star Wars, 100%. So, Yeah, that's, I mean, one of the things that always connected me with Star Wars, aside from, you know, being a child when it was sort of infused in my growing brain, was that it followed that timeless human epic hero's journey that is dormant within our very DNA. Uh, stories have been told from the beginning of civilization recounting these same themes, and Star Wars just sort of carried that through in, in the era of cinema in a way that had never been done before. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we all, even if we don't particularly like the story, we connect with the themes of the story just simply because we are, because we're human, because we exist. Yeah. And that it's it's crazy that it has that ingrained connection, but it, it's just a part of reality. If you know, as a yeah, it's human. well, it's timeless. Yeah, like it's, laser swords. It's, yeah, it's the same <laughs> laser swords. Yeah, it's the same charm that things like you know, Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe, or Lord of the Rings, or you know, anything else. But but then in space and modern and not afraid to be a little bit you know darker and a little more convoluted a little more complex i should say yeah. in its narrative um, while still telling the same the same story that you get um you know in in most other genres but it was the sci-fi version of that the space opera like you know it's it, it pretty much coined that and yeah. um you know no matter whether you like it whether you hate it or whatever it you know set the whole whole thing in motion so we wouldn't have the argument of what is better star trek or star wars without star wars so you know yeah. Um, so the, the concept of the show is around Star Wars games. We've done shows, I, Cameron and I have been talking about Star Wars and, and religion and Star Wars and, and movies and character development for a very long time together. Um, we've never talked about games though, which is insane because the, is. <laughs> the entire premise of Star Wars is based around toys, which is going to have to be another episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh God, yes. God. Oh man. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> But gonna... video games are the natural extension of that. And so yeah. I'm really excited to uh, discuss your guys' favorite yes. video games, why yes. they're your favorite, share some of mine. There's a little bit of overlap. How could there not be? But of then uh, also we're going to do a little uh, fun with our least favorite and talk about why yeah, they yeah. suck so bad or or maybe they just didn't live up to the hype. So uh, yeah. buckle your seatbelts, viewers, because this is going to get oh, really man. geeky and fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plug in your controllers now, because it's uh, we're going all night. I I spent this uh, early morning and early afternoon reconnecting with some of these games that we're going to be talking about briefly, and I learned an indisputable truth that I was afraid that I would learn, and it's that I don't have the patience for video games anymore. Now I don't think you guys oh, yeah. connect with that at all, but it's no, I just don't have the time. Yeah, that's that's, that's what it is. I don't have if yeah, I don't have the time to get good at hard games like I used to. So I don't play a lot of like the really brutal ones like Cuphead, or I don't play a lot of Dark Souls because I need a little bit of an ego stroke, and I don't have that much time yeah. to get really good at a game these days. So Dark yeah. Souls for me was about thirty minutes of trying to figure out the fuck I was doing, and then twenty minutes of me going, "I'm not that old." I should be able to play yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, if I could devote eight hours a day like I used to be able to, then yeah, oh, yeah. that would be a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> stupid yeah. families needing attention. <laughs> uh, family. Uh, well, let's start, Valfar. Let's start with your favorite. What What is uh, your number one favorite? Star Wars game, and I just happen to have All trailers right. for each of these. Yeah, Ooh. number one, number one, definitely. Uh, and I don't think anybody can. I, I mean, people can argue it, whatever they want, but it's. I would also put it as probably the best Star Wars game. Period. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the the original one, um, the RPG by BioWare, is still it holds up uh, even among the most scrupulous levels of gaming today, oh, yeah. as one of. Not only the be one of the best RPGs, the best Bioware offerings, but absolutely the best Star Wars game. I mean, live the Star Wars experience. Everything from, you know, the, the hopping planets, you know, galactic conspiracies, building your own lightsaber. I mean, light side, dark side, who, you know, great characters. I mean, 
what's not to love it's 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 a phenomenal piece like i'd be surprised if it's not in everybody's top three but um yeah it would, and it was crazy because it it brought a a wider star wars audience to the older public which if you didn't pay attention oh, to the yeah. comics you had no idea yeah. nope. oh, yeah. Yeah. i learned I mean, a lot from the game big time I, yeah that, that that was a lot of i mean that was definitely my exposure to the uh non-movie canon and all the stuff that led up to it and was just um rich and deep i mean no you you didn't just sit down and play it for an hour type of game no you got onto it and you got into it like there was it was uh and it just an epic saga absolutely worth the of of the uh the the franchise um, Cameron, I know you have uh, the sequel to this in your top three, but I mean, what did you think about this? This was the the groundbreaking epic by Bioware. They spent so much time in. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. I gotta stop this! I don't know what's been playing. <laughs> well, Anyways, it's fired up. It's fired up. Whatever. They can watch them. They're cool. I they don't have to this. listen to me. Um, yeah, it blew my mind. Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, I mean, I've been playing video games since I could pick up a controller. Yeah. Like, I just always yeah. have. I still have my original NES that I got in 89. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Still works to this day. Yeah. Yes. 88% of the time, it works every time. Every, yeah. Uh, Depends on how hard you blow it. No. Oh, of course, you have to blow it first. Dude, yeah. <laughs> my trick was um, getting the cartridge right at the edge, so you had to push down and in, so mm -hmm. it, like, clicked in. I don't know yeah, I was the in push and wiggle like do the the wiggle one. Yeah. Do the wiggle Later one. we would use these same techniques on our women, but hey, okay. and you Happily know what? Eighty eight percent of the time it works every time. Yes. God damn it. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, like I was never really too big into RPGs. Um, uh, aside from you know stupid shit like uh you know Super Mario RPG, because I mean it's mario you have to appreciate it oh, yeah um yeah. and pokemon it's kind of rpg ish but not really but um yeah this was like my first like indoctrination into how amazing an rpg could be and at, at this point in time uh when i first picked up kotar one and two and eh, you know i'd play like one or two hours a night after i get home from work this was one that i'd be playing until like five in the morning and then i have to be up at nine to get ready to go to work yeah. like it's destroyed me <laughs> i loved it one, oh 100 and the yeah the, there again the twists and turns that oh, the story yeah. took and everything still totally memorable like to this day like you know finding out that you're you're darth revan the whole time spoiler uh, alert spoiler, guys. Spoiler. you're darth revan the whole time <laughs> just with amnesia and then you have to make yeah. that choice do you continue that legacy or do you break that cycle right there just like uh what do i like yeah yeah, it yeah. was uh, that first time was legendary. Well, the funny thing is, for me, like I actually knew that twist because uh, my roommate at the time was a dick and liked to spoil everything Ouch. for me. Um, and still, even knowing that that yeah. happened, it did prepare me for the moment that you actually like it. You know it. it oh yeah, yeah. It's just insane. The story and it had so um, H and K forty seven, probably yeah. my favorite Star Wars character like ever, uh, ever like across the board. That fucking assassin, assassin droid. droid. So awesome, so hilarious, <laughs> yeah, and badass too. Oh, it was yeah. like, and and when I played it too. Of course, I went Sith. Like I usually always go evil the first time through for several reasons, but I was I wanted to see how Sith it could get, and he had no compunctions whatsoever the whole time, open and fire on whoever I needed it to, and it was just yeah. like, thank you, thank you, like this is. I really need somebody to enable me on this because these are some. <laughs> this, is, this is getting really dark yeah. here, so. Uh. Oh, it's great. Um, yeah, I, I remember, and it was very much like I grew up playing the Star Wars role playing game. Like the, sure. I was kicked out of my house while I was in high school, and I lived with a dude who was an avid. Like he would play Tie Fighter, the video game, on his old DOS PC, yeah. and then yeah. he would do um, the Star Wars role playing game, and he would rope all of us young kids into playing the game, and he would buy us beer, so we would you know put up with it and sit down and play this game, right. And then and then started like the devil worshiping and then the heavy metal music <laughs> yeah. and, and, he and then you know what oh wait yeah oh boy I was gonna ask Adam, what, Adam what happened like to, to your parents the... after that but that's that's another thing yeah. uh, he doesn't like to talk about the child trafficking yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a sore subject 
Anyway, it was, it, but that was the, the, the sort of initial break into the Star Wars game world was this idea right. that you could have your own, generate your own story, which was mind blowing because I had only watched the movies up until that point. Oh yeah. So being able to be like, I can participate in this universe. Yeah. Holy fuck. Like, yeah. And Bioware <laughs> did such a great job with the writing of that game that you sort of forgot that you were just playing a stupid game. It did feel yeah. like an epic oh, yeah. Star Wars story that you were yeah. just a put like intimately a part of, which was really oh, yeah. exciting. They could have cast like you know they could have cast the the cast of Star Wars into it, and that could have been Star Wars, and it still would have been just as like holy fuck, like it still would have been just as good. I mean, oh yeah, yeah it was great. Um, okay, so what about your second uh, most favorite Valpar? Second favorite? Well, you got it like right over your head, right there, or other side, whichever side it is. Uh, yeah, Tie Fighter. Like, like just like you said, on the old IBM 386, um, the first game I ever played with a flight stick on a computer. Yeah. That that was like virtual reality shit to me, right there. And um, not only like the the storyline, like working directly for Emperor Palpatine and like yes. the intrigue stuff, and that was that was like. Oh my god, you can actually do that? Like, there again, I like the villain aspect of it, and being able to, like, I'm standing, like, where Darth Vader stood. And, and it was, in, yeah, th you're showing it right there, the 16-bit yeah. LucasArts so Golden good. Age. Uh, so, like, yeah. yes, just spine-tingling for, for a young man like me. And then also getting off of the, because I played Doom, I played Wolfenstein, I played some flight simulators, but they were like super real, like you gotta land your fucking plane and watch your altimeter and stuff, like no, throw me out into <laughs> three-dimensional space with fucking Corellian cruisers and fucking Star Destroyers and fucking let's go, baby, like yeah, yeah it was... It was so mm -hmm. good and so new, because, I mean, you, it was 100%, a 3D space in a, in a time in gaming that that just really didn't exist. Yeah. I wow. mean, the idea yeah. that you could, like, fly up and around and then pivot your your ship, your tie, right behind your enemy was amazing to me. We spent so many hours trying to perfect our scores and get to that Emperor's Hand level. And uh, it was the first yeah. time we got to meet Thrawn. Oh, oh, God, yes. Like, oh. yeah. Oh, man. Fucking I, don't know. I forgot that part. Guess it's been a long Yeah, it was, it was crazy cool for... Uh, geek inside me but it, it was also like one of those things where you know i was living in this weird dude's house so if he wasn't on and it was in the time where internet was all just dial-up modem so you had no phone right. if you were online or um, like an ip like a direct ip connection or yeah. things like that oh yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're so he was days. playing it and just eating up all the time and then we, you would have to wake up super early in order to get on the computer before someone else did in order to play right. the damn game and it was just a constant battle Oh, it was so cool, though. The greatest. Yeah. And that was the game I was playing earlier today, and, and my stupid <laughs> controllers weren't working right because it's such an old oh, game. Poor yeah. Game the newer system. Well, I remember, like, the first time I got, like, because first the controls were really disorienting to me, like, at first. You know, just that whole, like, I'm just spinning. Like, the screen is just going by as fast as it can, and I'm just, like, getting nauseous sitting in the chair. But when I first perfected it and I got to do that first long flyby just over the top of an Imperial Star Destroyer from just from stem to stern and then bank around past the you know the jet engines and everything in the back it like you it was like I was in the future like I could see what <laughs> gaming had done like Star Wars games aside you know everything that's like one of those crystallized moments of gaming period is is TIE Fighter and so it's, uh, yeah, it, it holds a very special place. So a well-earned number two on my list. This is a conversation we're going to have to have at a later date because I'd never thought of ECI in the context of a video game before. Really? I would, I, yeah. Honestly. How? No. Always oh with sexuality God. and never with video no, games. Okay. So this is interesting. Gaming, I would uh, love oh, to have this conversation, yes, with yes, with, with both of you as well. Like maybe yes, we'll please. make that enough. Maybe I'll invite you guys and maybe that's what we'll do. We'll get, yeah. Let's I would, uh. This. Yeah, I'm down. Oh, we'll have a three, another three-way here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put a pin in that bad boy. Um, yeah, okay, so your third, your third favorite, number three, and it's and it's tough, and it, it is tough. But the original Star Wars Battlefront Two. I um, got the wrong damn trailer. I'm... Oh, <laughs> the new. <laughs> I should have specified. I didn't think about that until I uh, after I sent it. I was like, well, you know. Because now the new one is is a lot of fun and it's gorgeous and the new direction that they're going with it is is good. I have no gripes about it, but the original Battlefront two, it was like opening up a Star Wars toy box with every Star Wars toy in it, dumping it out on the floor, 
and just being able to dive headlong into it and play with every piece of Star Wars memorabilia in every Star Wars setting that you could possibly imagine. Mm. And that was, um, I spent so many hours in that. The space combat on it harkened back to that crystallized moment of TIE Fighter, um, you know, way back when. So that was a cool part about it. But also, yeah, just uh, you got to do everything. You got to play as Vader for the first time. You got to play as all the like the other heroes, and the combat was just insane. You got to blow up Ewoks with plasma grenades, and they make the little scream sound and everything. <laughs> like it, oh, go oh, just solid gold. Loved it, loved it. So the original Battlefront two. I sh- there again, my bad. I should have specified uh, for planning, but it is uh yeah. Choice game. Uh, Rhino Aviate is saying he had it on PS2 and uh, he he does like the new one, but the original was better, so he concurs with you on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to note that in his Nintendo cartridge trick, he said his trick was to lick it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do you do the alphabet like with your tongue, like or like? <laughs> is that? Yeah, dude. Sam Kinison all the way. <laughs> A. <laughs> um. So for people who are watching this and, and seeing some inconsistencies with the video, this is totally my fault. I'm trying a new form of, of streaming, of connecting them, and it doesn't seem to be as smooth as in the past. So lesson learned, but we're going to move through the show anyway. As long as the audio is okay, that's fine. Yeah. And I, I've always been told I have a great face for radio anyway. Okay, so. <laughs> um, all right, Cameron. So we're going to go with you now. What's your number all one right. favorite Star Wars game? All right, my number one is The Force Unleashed, the very first one. It is uh, the story of uh, Vader's secret apprentice. Uh, You go from the second he catches him, uh, well, not catches him, but first encounters him uh, when he's executing Order 66. And, uh, of course, Vader takes out his pops and then... As as he's getting ready to kill the Jedi that he's after, uh, Star Killer, well, the future Star Killer, shows up and essentially takes the lightsaber out of Vader's hand, um, or was it his dad's? Whatever, I'm messing it up. I'm I'm not here today, but basically, yeah, a favorite one. The story is amazing. Uh, that's honestly out of all the Star Wars games, aside from my number three. That's the one I've played the most. Uh, I usually play it at least once or twice a year. Uh, the most intense moment I've ever had in a video game is the moment pulling down the Star Destroyer with force. Oh my god. The first time I did that, I thought my head was going to fucking explode. My heart rate was up. I'm just fucking losing my shit. It's like, yeah. oh my god, oh my god, is it going to come down? And it comes down, I drop the controller, I'm just like, what the fuck? It's that the was, best thing yeah. ever. That was one of the moments that would, they had hyped up for it, and it, it for me it did not it did not disappoint. That oh was, no! Uh, yeah, that game. I mean, for, for there again for um, uh, stuff because you know you get like those stories that happen within the Star Wars universe that parallels the movies, and that is one of the oh, it's fantastic Star Killer oh, yeah. story, and just that intro part. Like I knew I knew it was going to be something special. That intro part when it's on, I think the, the Battle of Kashyyyk. And mm-hmm. you stomp out as Vader. The tutorial, you get to play as Darth Vader, yeah. which is always a toy to me. But yeah. he doesn't run. He doesn't sprint. He just has that fucking Vader walk. That yeah, stop. Why would he run? And you can do the force throw with that and just literally launch in Wookiees just mm-hmm. 30 feet in the air. Just, <laughs> just over and over and over again. I didn't even swing a lightsaber in that game for the, probably the first two <laughs> missions because I just spent the rest of the time uh-huh. throwing everybody <laughs> everywhere. Like the whole time. And I'm just like, this is what it's like to have the force. Yes, oh, yeah. this is this is power, well, and it was so user friendly too. Like it, yeah. every other game I'd ever played where you you had force powers, either it was just an open shut case, like oh press this button, they go no, button. yeah, no or this one you some, actually... tried some gimmick that didn't work, like yeah. Jedi Academy early oh, before God. that tried tried yeah. some gimmicky you know immersion kind of thing, and it didn't work. Force Unleashed was like it was engaging and it was accessible. Yes, and so oh, you God, just got. To my- yeah, first time I played it, like, once I got to a point where there was, I mean, there was a, a mission, but it was a sort of a cold mission, I just sat there and was fucking throwing people around, just seeing, oh, let's see how high I can get him. Oh, uh, let's yeah. go can this I, far. Can I dangle? Can 
can I throw yeah. him and catch him again? Like, can I juggle so this amazing. guy? Like, yes, yes. 100%. I mean, another one of the things that really defines this game amongst all of the Star Wars games, in the same vein as Kodor or TIE Fighter, is that there's a really well-written story behind it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And 100%. Then, and this is something that I miss about LucasArts after having seen the new two Disney versions of Star Wars movies. There was great storytelling that was connected to everything else that had existed before. And so mm -hmm. that's what I loved about Star Wars is you felt like you it, you weren't going to be dropped into a bucket. There were, you're going to be revealed some new stuff, but it all connected within the same shared universe and it mm -hmm. all made sense. Force Unleashed, again Unleashed, it took that to a extended hyper ultra force level but it was still accessible as far as the story goes you you felt oh, like you understood within the context of the universe and the time frame that it was happening what was going on you felt there's a, there's just a comfort within that if you follow mm -hmm. the, the story well, see, and, and i think you hit on something really important which has kind of been my you know i think disney's doing a, a good job so far i'm not like bashing the whole thing i'm not as invested in it as other people but what they're missing when they rendered everything inert they basically, they, they made it seem like it was impossible to tie all these loose ends together when companies like LucasArts had been successfully for years tying all these loose ends together and building on a multimedia universe that went from print to movies to video games to RPGs that was all cohesive and all tangible. And for Disney to say, well, we're trying to keep a clearer picture on the goals for Star Wars was like, dude, we've been doing that the whole fucking time. Like, well, what do the, you mean you can't do it? Like, The crazy thing is, too, there was pretty much, I mean, aside from Uncle George, like, there was basically two people that ran the whole continuity department. Yeah, that was yeah. books, that was TV shows, that was every aspect. And then for Disney to be like, it's too hard. It's like, yeah. they, they've been doing a pretty good job for 30, 40 years. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there's like, it's one of those things where Star Wars almost has like a religious aspect to it. If you want to undertake a new Star Wars project, you better have studied up on this vast body of work and of literature and and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, well, if you've watched the other uh, like, if you've watched four of the last six movies, you're good. You're fine. You know, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating from a fan standpoint, but we still do have these games that really connect us with yes. the sense, the, the essence of Star Wars that we mm -hmm. love so much. Yeah, I remember The Force Unleashed the first time I played it. Um, it. And in fact, my wife was really into it too. And so we would sort of take turns for hours at a time running through this storyline. And it, yeah. it's just so much fun being able to see your Force abilities develop Mm -hmm. watch this new story that up until that point you had no idea about this period of time um, before the open civil war uh, oh, yeah. you know what the empire was doing and it was so exciting to be the yeah. apprentice of vader i mean holy shit that was oh, so cool fuck. going God, on these secret yeah. missions and seeing mm -hmm. that there was actually vader was more much more complex than just the slave to the emperor you know, yeah. more than just trying to find his son or offering his son the chance to rule at his side. This was yeah. an active goal of his. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't just a thug. He wasn't just a second hand. Like, no, he had the will, the ability, and the agenda to to stand up completely apart on his own. And that's, you know, as far as fleshing out an existing character and adding in new characters. Like, I, that's another reason I'm pissed off that we will never get to, you know... To see, like, for instance, like a, just a, you know, maybe in, in some galaxy far, far away, like a Star Killer versus, like, or Star Killer and Darth Maul pairing in, like, a movie or show or oh what have God. you. Like, would just be, like, right, or even whether it's a rivalry or, like, a tenuous alliance. I always thought they would be fantastic to share something together. And now, oh, now it's never, now it's not going to ever be a thing, you know. Yeah. Um, it is up here. <laughs> it, it will, oh. And in, and in my pants. That's what yeah, I, that's yeah. that's what I'm gonna be thinking about tonight. In my I never heart, even thought about that. Pants. Yeah. Mind, heart, and penis. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, your second favorite. We've already discussed okay. it. In the first episode. Did we? The Kotor two. Oh, oh yeah. you mean the, the 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 beginning of the episode? Yeah. So Kotor two. Yeah, it's just yeah. 
Oh my it's, god. It, it was more of Kotar 1, and it didn't try to do anything different. It didn't try to nope. do anything else. It was just, it just 80, it, at least 80 more hours of Kotar 1, and it was oh, fucking yeah. perfect. It was well, exactly what we wanted. My, okay, so my the thing that made this more important to me than Kotar 1... I mean, Kotar 1, that just, yeah. period, that's like one of the best games ever made. Just period. Not even Star Wars, just that is hands down one of the best games ever made. The reason why I prefer this one over um, the original, one, I'm fucking obsessed with Darth Nihilus. The Lord of Hunger is oh, my yeah. god, mm, and I am him. Yeah. Um, but actually being able to watch the transition of your choices. Because, I mean, in the first one, you don't really get that as much. Um, yeah, whereas with this one, you can actually... Very true. And seeing yeah. it reflected in your in your um, colleagues, too. That that oh, yeah. actually, yeah, very, oh, yeah. very true. Like, very true. That was, honestly, that's to be, yeah, that's pretty much what made this uh, my number two versus Kotar 1 being my number two. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, I always try every single time I play this or the first one, I always try to be light side just because I, I want that story. Yeah. And I can't fucking do it. I pretty much... <laughs> I pretty much have to force myself to do it. I pretty much have to just like, no, I'm pushing the best decision yeah. every time just just to do it. It's but just, I, you know, cool. and this, yeah, this is one of the things why I always play Evil first is because it's a much faster playthrough, especially in Bioware games. If you want to be good, you're going to be doing a lot of fetching, a lot of run yeah, around and scan fast. ten terminals or. So let's go on another scavenger hunt because so and so yeah. needs medicine for his grandma. When when you're the dark side, you can just be like, oh yeah, your grandma's sick. Force lightning, she's dead. Now tell me <laughs> yeah. what I want. Like, yeah, problem, and then you solved. get paid, and then you get paid, and then you level up, and then it's like, let's move on with the storyline here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, well, it's with, a very efficient with, way to play. And with a second one, it's like, uh, you know, if I kill one more person, my eyes are gonna turn yellow. Right. I need to go right. find this person to kill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing cool happens when you're good. No, that's true. It's like, oh, my face is going to be all fucked up and crack, you know, cracked and split open if I make like one more bad decision. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. Let's dive right in. Yeah. 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 I think the longest I've lasted in either of those games trying to be light side was maybe two hours, and it was a rough two yeah. hours. Yeah. Went completely against every <laughs> instinct. It's like, no, oh, I gotta be, gotta be nice. I just got to see it. I got to see how this turns out. Like, yeah. Nope. Do you guys ever I know run into feeling. a situation where you're trying to make a choice, but you genuinely don't know what the right answer is anymore? Like, oh. you're so confused between yeah. what the game is supposed to want you to do versus what you want to do naturally. And you're just like, I don't, I, there isn't oh, yeah. the right answer. I don't know what the good answer is. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going through that right now with Life is Strange. I just started oh. that. The, the other, oh, Life is Strange, yeah. or the other Telltale games that are out too. Very, yeah, very much. So. I've only the only ones I've dug so far has been um, Life is Strange and the first Walking Dead. I couldn't get into the second Walking Dead. That's right. Yeah. Check out Wolf Among Us. Just as an aside, if you haven't played the Wolf Among Us, fuck, check that one out. Check okay. that one the fuck out. Yeah, you'll you'll dig it. But yes, but back to Adam's question. Fuck yeah! Like especially <laughs> as games are getting more complex in their narrative and. Characters are getting more believable, and we're getting out of the realm of every game, every storyline is a cliche, and, you know, it's all the, all the fucking time. Now, that said, one of the biggest sins in gaming is making somebody make a choice without either explaining everything all the way or, or wording it so that it's just purposely misleading. That fucking pisses me off so much. Like, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through a game and it's like, I want to be nice to this guy. And it's like, you know, the choice is like, you know, tell him to get fucked or tell him less to get fucked. And it's like, well, why are you even giving me the choice here? Like, yeah. I can, you know. Yeah, yeah that is it's fucking rough. Like, either give me a choice or just take it away from me. Don't give me the bullshit. Yeah. You, get to, you get to decide how nicely you want to tell this guy to get fucked. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so what's your third favorite? Okay, my third favorite, and I will argue this to the death, that this is easily in the top three best Star Wars games ever made. Um, the franchise in and of itself, I fucking love, but Lego Star Wars, the complete saga. You know, There I has know, not I, been yeah, a I will single not even, Lego game. Yeah. I will <laughs> not even fight you on that. It's great. Yeah, yeah it's it great. Is. No. It is, because you get to play all six movies, 
you get to go through all the really stupid scenes, but you're in as Legos. And yeah. they're getting to play, like, the free play and the little Easter eggs and shit. It is... I have played the shit out of that game to the point where I've had to buy two discs. Because <laughs> I have just played it so damn much. Um, I mean, Lego games in general, they're great. You know exactly what to expect. They're goofy, they're Legos, and they're just awesome. Um, this one, definitely the best. Yeah, I just... I, I, I agree. It. I agree for several reasons. A big one is that I'm a huge fan of satire in general. I'm a huge fan of satire, and one of the things that um, one I, I guess one of the, the the worst things you can do for Star Wars sometimes is take it too seriously. Oh, God, yes. like you know, there has to be that element of fun to the whole thing, and Lego Star Wars is that distilled. Like it's goofy. Absolutely. It's slapstick. It's like that moment in the first one when that stormtrooper walks into the into the beam, yeah. you know, and it's it, but it's like that deliberately all the time, and it's it's a blast. And you know, it's actually one of the ones I play with my kids too, so that has an uh, immediate appeal right there. So you know, we play the shit out of that one. Oh, yeah. Well, and the great thing is too, like even with how old it is, like uh, the graphics still hold up really well. Yeah. Because you know, some of the older games you go back to and play, like um, Dark Force, like I I love that one. Um, but sometimes it's hard, like, you realize, oh, God, I'm playing a really old game. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This yeah. one, I mean, it's it's super just, it, it's, you know what time it's from, but you just mm -hmm. don't even care. Like, five seconds in, you're just, you're in. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, I will, I, like I said, I won't I won't even fight you on that one, because it's, uh, yeah, the, I love the Lego games in general, and I the Lego Star Wars is a, is a blast. It's a hoot, oh, yeah. and um, it should, everybody should ch definitely check it out. If oh, you haven't, if you think it's just a kid's game or whatever, no, fuck mm, that. No. Throw it on. No, fuck that. Like, yeah. Lego games are for everybody. <laughs> for everybody. E for everybody. Exactly. That's not just a suggestion. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking right. That's a fucking mandate. Yep. This was North Korea, and you hadn't played it yet. <laughs> salt mines. Three generations of your family are going to the goddamn salt mines. And that would be just. Like that would yeah. be very just. I wouldn't even feel bad. I'd be like, oh, fuck. Well, you yeah. know, yeah. But... Pretty much. Sorry, kid. You got to go to the salt <laughs> mines. <laughs> yeah, your parent fucked up. Whatever. I I enjoyed playing them once. I could never do it again. Really? Couldn't yeah. go really? Through. Even after you unlocked everything? I, like, that was I'm the not... biggest thing. That's the thing. I can't. I can't handle the repetition of unlocking and then getting more coins to unlock one other extra body part, so that it's just a cosmetic thing. It means nothing. That drives me insane. So I'll play okay. it once to, with my kids, just so we can have that experience. And then I, after I will that, say, I'm just yeah. Like, to be fair, you. I do have my kids do all the harvesting. Like, oh yeah, run around, smash it. Yeah, get all the <laughs> coins. Dad, daddy needs money, so let's go. Come on. See that? That's like. That's at the end of the night after I've had right. way too much to drink and I shouldn't right. be playing video games anymore. I should be in bed. Daddy needs that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, it, it is a good game. I mean, it, to be fair, the, the whole series of games, whether it's the DC ones, the Star Wars, the Indiana Jones, yeah. or the, whatever, Indiana they're Jones just killed. fun. It's just stupid yeah. fun. And, and it's accessible to literally everyone. So, Oh, like, and as a side note... Anybody that's on Xbox that has this game, I have one more achievement to unlock. Okay, then you're going to help me. I need to play with somebody online to unlock that fucking achievement so I can finally have a complete list for this fucking game that I bought okay. whenever the fuck it came out. So, yeah, I'll have to get you my, uh, uh, says, my handle. Yeah, it's seven this. on the screen right there. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, 11 years in the making. Yeah, I'll help you out. I'll help you out. <laughs> cool, cool. I need this. I, I am a completionist. That's why oh I... My God. I'm not good at video games because I don't... I mean, I enjoy them. Right. But I take them way too serious. <laughs> so, like, well... Even the Lego ones. Oh, even yeah. the Lego... Oh, God. Probably the stupidest achievement. Like, this has nothing to do with Star Wars, so I'm sorry, people. <laughs> That's all right. It's your show, um, man. You're half your show, anyway, so... True. Um, so, Fairy Tale Fights. Have you played that one? I've seen... I haven't played it. I haven't oh played it. Oh, my God. It. All right. So, it's, it's dumb as shit. It's fun okay. as hell. If your kids like blood, it's a perfect kid game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so one of the achievements is to skate around on blood for ten minutes. Oh. I yeah. fucking did that achievement just so I have it. Like, <laughs> it was so mind Literally, like, skate, like, ice skate around on yeah. blood for ten yep, minutes. Yep, yeah. kill, I mean, that doesn't even sound people. that dumb. Like, I'm actually kind of interested now. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay, well, my wife told me it was dumb. She didn't want to do it, so I just oh, did it. Okay. She's out smoking, but yeah. It's... 
I, I'm that guy when it comes to video games. Wow. <laughs> nice. See, I respect that. I respect that, but I've never been that guy. If if yeah, an achievement good. is is fun to get, if it's like you know, do this mission like like a professional. Yeah, and I like the game and I'm good at it. Sure, that's one thing. But if it's like go around and collect 200 fucking used to pieces of toilet paper from public restrooms, I'm just like. <laughs> I, I'm not interested in doing that. I have no. Yeah, that, that's, that's I'm not, not going to do that shit. That's. It's like, oh, but you get an achievement. It's like I don't give a shit. Like I'm not going to do it. It's no, it's not worth my time. No. It's not worth my time. Yeah, it's not worth my. If your achievement has to just be busy work, I'm not interested. Yeah. But yeah, so. All right. Fair well, enough. I want to talk about my first of favorites. Yes. And this game I spent so many hours on, and it, this isn't fair because I'm, I'm referencing a game, but it's really the series of games. It's the Jedi Knight series of games. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, Jedi Knight. Mm. Lo- I started with Dark Forces, and I went through yeah. all the Jedi Knights as they came out, and I and nice. I got every yeah, single force power, power and everything through them, and then I realized that there was a multiplayer component, and you could skin the multiplayer yeah. characters and you could just go to these battle arenas and just kill thousands just of other people at the up. same yep. time it yep. was so exciting so this is what was great about this series is that it introduced you before kotor before anything to the idea of being a full-on jedi with a series of force powers that didn't really hadn't been defined for video games yet right and so this Once you don't broke get that ground. yeah what's that oh yeah just like uh, that that's one thing about the force that people don't get if you haven't if, if you've only ever watched the movies there's so much more force powers than just the the push the pull the lightning you know force choke and this one just like you said the jedi knight series was a brilliant brilliant showcase for what the jedi could fucking do they yeah. weren't just they didn't just have laser swords and a couple of neat little tricks no they could they could really get down like tactically um, you know, just it, it was it required thinking not like a person with just like, a, um, you know, for other games at the time, it wasn't just platforming. It wasn't get the power, fight the boss or anything like that. You had to find your style, find your powers and then find out what worked for you. And I played the multiplayer on that probably more than I played the, the campaign on that. Oh, it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And just like you said, being able to just perfect what you're doing. And just maraud through there. Oh my god, yes. So much fun. It also introduced you to the idea of of coming up against dark side guys that weren't that was from like the ancient Sith Empire. Mm-hmm. Like the extent of my understanding of the Sith up until that point was the Emperor. Like that's all I knew. Like yeah. He, he, yeah. there was no teacher to the Emperor at that time. It was just the Emperor. And you were just like, okay, well that's the bad guy. This brought a heritage that he was a part of and that was incredibly exciting that oh, you could yeah. then tap into that heritage and then go to these ancient sith worlds and then unearth these ancient artifacts and, and meet mm. these crazy <laughs> ancient sith creatures it was so damned exciting to the the young impressionable yep. actually i was in the military at that time young military <laughs> impressionable adam it was just so cool to and like my my uh, lieutenants they were playing the games and it was just something that if you love Star Wars and you could afford a computer, why yeah. would you not be playing Jedi Knight? Like, <laughs> there's was... there's no reason. Yeah, it, it dominated everything for a couple of years too. It was, um, and still, you know, it actually. I, I haven't played it in a number of years, but when I did, it still held up well, considering every. You know, it's like what I mean. It's got to be 15, 16, 20 years at it's, this time. Yeah, it's over twenty but, for the. Original. Yeah. Wow. Which but um, no. Crazy. And, and there, and that also. Talk about bringing those levels of lore and things like that to the Star Wars universe that, oh, there again, don't fucking mean anything. You actually mm-hmm. worked to go see that stuff, to earn that knowledge yeah. and that, you know, experience within the Star Wars universe. And according to the mainstream now, that doesn't matter. Oh, I'm just <laughs> yeah. still, I, it chaps my fucking ass still. God. Yeah, I've got a bookcase right here that I look at and cry at yeah. every day because <laughs> it, none of it counts anymore. You know, yeah, you you shaped that in the old like they're getting code tour. You yeah. shaped that fucking history by hand. Like, oh, so yeah. frustrating. You were literally yeah. part of but, it, and now it's mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Ah. Um, yeah. yeah. So this this is going way back. My next one. Okay, so this is when I was a young NES player. This is the original Star Wars NES game. Oh man. Yeah. This, this is just the commercial for it, which is ridiculous. Oh, but this God. was amazing. Side scroller oh, 
2D yes. jumping and shooting and ducking and it oh, was God just old damn. school. Like, Mario with a laser sword. Yes. Like, oh, fuck yeah. yes. Like, ah, yeah, dude. But, I mean, when you were in the Death Star and you had to fight that trash compactor monster, that was just so right. exciting. Uh, so yeah, and, well, and that was that was cool at the time because you never see the trash compactor monster, like, yeah. except for that, like, right there. Like, that was your chance, you know? Now, forgive me if I'm wrong. Is is Was it this one or was it Empire Strikes Back where you have to... You show down with Darth Vader in one of the sand crawler things on Tatooine. I think that might be um, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, now that I, I think, think about it, it. Yeah, pretty but, sure that's Empire. Yeah, you fight through one of those sand crawlers and you fight Darth Vader at the end. And when you kill him, he turns into a giant spider. I didn't remember <laughs> that in the movies, but I was I was really? very disappointed was that they did. I was very yeah. disappointed that they didn't extrapolate on that further in the extended universe. I, yeah, his giant spider power was really underutilized. <laughs> From that that's pretty. On. It is pretty stupid. It's yeah. They should have had more of it. Yeah, I agree. It was just so <laughs> much fun, though. I mean, those are the games that we yeah. played at that time, and so mm -hmm. it wasn't. It wasn't anything. It wasn't retro. It was. It was just what we had, and so yeah. it was exploring uh, the original Star Wars: A New Hope via video game, and it was just like, yes, yeah, this is awesome. I will play Dragon Warrior and Legend of Zelda and Star Wars yeah. all day long. Yeah. All day long. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I I still got. Uh, I still got Empire, and I still have Super Return. Uh, yeah. Love those games. So I didn't mention Tie Fighter because you had already mentioned it, Valifar. But of sure, course, sure. of course, big time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've gone over our favorites. Let's talk about our <laughs> least favorites or ones we outright loathe. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! So Valifar, what's your what's your most disliked? I have, I have a fantastic story for this one there's a little bit of setup to it so bear with me but it's it is a it's uh, okay so we're star wars game so this is during the um the, the xbox the previous generation of games xbox 360 playstation 3 and uh i was doing freelance article writing for a, a website that's no longer doing articles or reviews or anything like that but i got a chance when the microsoft bus came to town to uh it was my first it was my only ever actually as a as a press agent behind the scenes thing I got to get hands-on, first-hand look at the Star Wars-themed Xbox 360. And the 360 itself was painted up and colored like R2-D2, complete with the manufacturing stickers from whatever the, the corporation that built R2-D2 yeah. in the background. It was very meticulously done. It made the little whistles the yeah. when you started it up and, and shut it down. The connect was pure night. white. Yeah, the... <laughs> The Kinect was a pure white, like a Stormtrooper, just crisp, like, and the eyes were like, um, you know, Stormtrooper eyes. Had the gold C-3PO controller, and I'm like, this is, this is an amazing piece of machinery. This strokes every geek, everything I could ever have. It was, they like said the price point is gonna be like 450 bucks, which for like for me at the time was like, okay, that may, I'm glad I get to do this right now. I get to play with it. <laughs> well, there, for these exclusive backstage thing, us press agents got to have a first-hand closed door sign a non-disclosure agreement about the new star wars connect Whoa. the closest <laughs> most immersive star wars experience that you could hope to have and we're just like oh my god we're practically jerking each other off we're so fucking horny <laughs> for this thing like I, like oh, we're like oh god yes they're like because we're, we're thinking like the connect like this is going to be lightsabers and fucking like, uh, you know, speeder bikes and fucking Endor and shit like that. Well, it, they started up, and so we're just randomly, they're like, okay, who wants to go first? And I'm, like, tall and loud, and I'm like, fuck it, fuck yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> and so they're like, all right, yeah, they're like, all right, come on up. And I get in front of the thing, and I'm, like, in front of the connect, and it's, like, calibrating my body, and I'm just, like, getting getting ready. And the first mission it has you do, it's, like, a tutorial part where you – you smash the fucking like stuff with as the rancor and you lift one arm and it lifts the other arm. It's it's kind of neat, you know, I'm blowing shit up as a rancor. Like that's that's okay, that's cool. And then next it's like I do a a pod race and it it's a little clunky. It doesn't quite work like I want it to and I, I'm pretty sure that it's the connect not reading me, but everybody thinks it's just I suck at it and so there's not a whole lot going on. So I'm like already kind of getting a little sweaty and a little like eh whatever. And then something strange happens. It goes on to the next one. It's like, oh, fucking boss fight with fucking Darth Vader. And I'm like, oh, this must be the lightsaber section. And then 
Darth Vader starts fucking dancing, like with the with his Praetorian guards out and the stormtroopers, and it's like I don't I don't remember the song, but it's a Darth Vader. It's it's like almost like a Weird Al style parody, a serious one. Where it's like a Christina Aguilera one set up where it's like, I'm the force baby, I'm the force, or something like, I don't remember it. But I'm supposed to be following along as he's like, fucking <laughs> slapping and fucking, like, getting down. And i just standing there, like, looking at everybody, and everybody's like, looking at me like, is he gonna start dancing? And every, all the other press people are like, thank fucking God that's not me. And in my head, I'm like... Thank fucking God I signed. They all signed non-disclosure agreements because this is there's there's no videos being taken right now. There's nothing, and like this the this like the the people the Microsoft people are like dancing and like trying to get me to go with it. Like I'm a toddler, you know, and I'm just like I'm like, does anybody else want to try this here? Like anybody want to get a go? I and it's like it out. just runs and it. it just, yeah, it, it finishes, and I'm like, I'm like done, and then Han Solo comes out and is doing his fuck. Han Solo is fucking twerking on the screen. That's the last <laughs> thing I see is fucking Han Solo shaking his ass, and then they just kind of turned it off, and they're just like, okay, so any questions? And it was like, yeah, why a dance game? Like, like whose idea was the dance game? Like, and they're like, oh, this is. This is more for the you know, Just Dance was the number one selling game for the Connect that came out, and they're like, I'm like. So you thought there was crossover with the Star Wars fans then, did you? <laughs> best-selling movie franchise, best-selling Connect game. Yeah, that's great. Like, that's a brilliant idea. And they're like, well, it's not for everybody. And it's like, well, clearly. So thank you. So worst fucking Star Wars game. Worst fucking game experience of my fucking life. Worst fucking decision up in Microsoft ever. <laughs> Fucking staying the fucking Xbox 360 Star Wars edition with that feculent piece of garbage. <laughs> fucking bantha shit, oh, man. That's like, awesome. yeah. That so awesome. that's that's my worst one. That's Star Wars oh, Connect. Great. I, I, I was the guy that pre-ordered that two years early because it was supposed <laughs> to come out a year before I got it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm so sorry. There was a non-disclosure agreement. I wanted to tell. The world, like, I, I felt like fucking Peter Parker and J. Jonah Jameson as I'm trying to, like, find a way I can tell this story to the editor of the website. And he's like, fuck no, dude, we'll get shut down. Lo and behold, three months later, he couldn't pay the fucking server thing anyway and got shut down. And I'm like, we could have had a million fucking clicks if all oh, yeah. I had done was just put you in a position to get sued by Microsoft and LucasArts. But, you know, yeah, I mean... No big no big deal. It's just no big you know, deal. I mean, they, it, they could sue God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I like uh, the dance off. That's the only thing I can ever get to work on that uh, fucking that, game. And and it, what that is the funniest part is that that is the only part that actually ended up working when the game released. So that that is the <laughs> ultimate. Like they put the most time and attention oh, yeah. into that part of the game too. So I I don't know. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, I was I was I was pretty disappointed when uh, I had to go fucking from uh, Riverdale to Centerville. Um, if anybody's in Utah, you understand that. If not, it's a long fucking distance sure, sure. to hit every fucking Seven Eleven to get that one brisk bottle, so I can get that one fucking tie. Or not tie. Jesus Christ, the Pod Racer, and then. I get it in, and you go, oh, okay, connect, try to scan my bottle. Nope, 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 maybe, nope, nope. nope maybe, nope, <laughs> nope, fucking finally scans, and then it was a piece of shit. I was pissed. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I have a video of Cameron introducing yeah. me to that game for the very first time and my son, <laughs> and uh, yeah. let's just watch this and have, have some fun. Sure. It, it's, it's so... It wouldn't register at all. It fucking hates me. Like, uh, you'll, you'll see in the video, but I change into white pants because I I wear so that, all black because yeah, I'm fat. so that the camera can see you. Which they don't tell you this, but the Kinect actually runs on a laser grid. It doesn't actually oh, have yeah. anything to do with the camera. So we tried yeah, the light. didn't work. Let's try the light. Oh, the, yeah. So there you go. And then the pants. Uh. Yep. It's... No, this right here. This could be any Kinect game ever yeah, right yeah. here like i had, i was so excited when rise of the nightmares came out yeah. like oh we improved the engine and blah 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 oh, yeah and i was fucking just like yeah connect horror game oh, oh dude oh, i was in. i i can't get past the training sequence because i can't 
fucking yeah. run. It won't let me run. No, I, I was one of the ones I wanted the Connect to be just amazing. I wanted to like it. I was on board. I'm like, new Microsoft technology. This is like, next thing you know, we're going to have virtual reality. I wanted the Connect to be so great. And it really just never, ever was, like, at all. So yeah. I, I, I still, every now and then, will pretend that it's still and good. And like technology. I said... Yeah, like I said, the video of the right there, like that's like every Connect game. It's like, oh, that's not working. Let's just play Connect Sports. Now yeah. let's play Connect Sports. Yeah. Yep. One hundred percent. Oh, here we go. Oh. I, I oh, cut out your dressing nice. moment. Oh man, that was the funny part. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was recording the whole time. The whole time with the camera, it was crazy. But you just changed pants right there, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he cuts it out. It's horrible. That was the funny part. Jeez. Uh, and so then we did about fun too. And then yeah. end up playing, yeah, Battlefront too. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's how it goes with Connect. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. I mean, it works good as a microphone. Like Mass Effect Three had like the element where you could like talk to it, like give commands to your yeah. squad, and that that worked all right. Hmm. And then when I needed to do Skype sessions with like my folks, like that was good for that. And yeah. but other than that, yeah, a very sad, sad story. That yeah, I, I had a fun story with uh, the whole microphone. I didn't realize that it recorded well, live. Yeah. Um, I was playing Borderlands 2 with a, my roommate, and one of our friends just kind of popped on. I didn't realize that he could hear us, and the whole time I'm talking shit about his wife. Oh! <laughs> and, then, and then, okay, so this is going on for a good 10, 15 fucking minutes of me just bashing her. I mean, it's his ex-wife now, so it's it's cool, and there's reason And now we know ex. why. And then, yeah, it's because of me. Fucking yeah, so, so we're fucking, fucking playing... Home. We're playing for this long, and they, then next thing I know, here. All right, guys, I gotta get off now. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, How bad was I? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I've definitely had those moments where I'm like talking shit with like a buddy, like, oh look at this fucking guy and his fucking boyfriend up here, fucking sucking dick, and they're just like, hey man, you want to mute your mic? I'm like, oh yeah, sorry, buddy. Like, <laughs> My nine-year-old son is playing. Like, oh yeah, well he's well, probably doing he better than playing online. Yeah, no oh, wonder he's doing so good. God damn. <laughs> <My God. laughs> All right, Cameron, what's your fate or your least favorite? Oh, my story? least favorite. I can't even remember what the fuck it's called right. Oh, Lethal Alliance. Uh, it was so yeah, exactly. I I was pretty stoked because it's like, all right, so I got a PSP exclusive yeah. um, uh, Star Wars game. Mm. It's following a Twi'lek, or Twi'lek, so, hey, fuck, that's cool as shit. All right, right. Like, all right, so, uh, the PSP, it, it was really pokey as far as playing. Yeah, it, just, it was... Uh, the controls, mm -hmm. like, I mean, there were some games that translated well, uh, like, especially original PlayStation games, like, playing right. like Silent Hill or Resident Twisted Evil. Metal and fucking yeah, it, Filter. It, it, yeah. it translated mm -hmm. perfectly. This... <laughs> was a late generation PS2 game, early PS3 game for a PSP and it just it felt like shit. The story it just was unmemorable. Like I yeah. could not get it. But I it was one that I really had to force myself to finish just because like, Ooh. well I, I spent five dollars on it, I might as well play it. Yeah, you might as well get through and, it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like the you don't care about the characters at all. I mean, the droid was cool because he's a droid. I mean, yeah, yeah. There were, there were stormtroopers, so that was pretty cool, right? You got and, to and play the Twilight, so representation, right? Like, <laughs> you know. yeah, it just God, it was, it was so bad. Like it, especially for the time frame, uh, uh, because if I remember correctly, this is uh, pre a New Hope, like right leading up to it. So basically, you're you're a rebel spy or well mercenary, if I remember correctly, um, just trying to deliver plans to the rebellion. That's a big fucking like you can do so much with that story and make it amazing, and yeah. then you make this. And that was. <laughs> and it's like they might as well have just said, "Oh, this is a children's game," right? And then, like, oh, okay, I'll avoid this because hey, not have real story. Star Wars fans, this is just a cash grab. <laughs> Don't I, bother. Don't it's... bother. Yeah. Like I, I fought plenty of stupid shit. Like Shadows of the Empire, I sure. fought that twice, and that is arguably one of the worst video games ever made. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this one, 
<laughs> like, I, oh god, uh, it was horrible. I thought I lost it at one point, and then I was disappointed when I found it when I was moving. <laughs> that's how bad this game. You're like, is. I'm free. I'm free now. Yeah, like, yes. Yes, thank you. Because I can't bring myself, I can't actually bring myself to throw it away because it's a video game and I'm a cheap fuck and I bought it. But God, I want to. Yeah, it's so bad, so bad. Uh, I'd never even heard of this before you told me it was your least favorite. So, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'll yeah. be avoiding it. There, are, there are like so many Star Wars you know video games like if you look at the list you know there are so many and the ratio of not good to exemplary ones is very heavy on the not good side unfortunately oh, yeah. but the ones that are good are very very good yeah. so yeah absolutely yeah. there's yeah there's no middle ground for them either yeah yep. yep so closing out this discussion with my least favorite i want to preface this by saying there was a time when video games were completely unforgiving and this is why this is my least favorite, because there was not forgiving at all. It didn't care about playability. It didn't care about whether you had fun. This was the arcade Star Wars oh, game. Oh, God. Star Wars arcade. Straight up yeah. arcade. I oh. hate this with every ounce of my soul because it is so goddamned hard. Yeah. No. I love it so oh, much. Man. You like this? I do. My buddy used to have one. It was a dual con. Like, he had the actual, like, um... Uh, like the one you'd find in the arcade, like the full controls, the full everything. Yeah. But oh, it was uh, it was the original and Empire. And I fucking love that game. Ugh. But I mean, it, it is definitely a retro. Yeah. What was that like, one? That was a, a twenty six hundred. That one's the twenty six <laughs> the Atari twenty six hundred title, if I recall. Um, yeah. See, that's like just because I was born I was born in the eighties. So like I was like right on the bet. Like when the Nintendo. The NES first, like, was in its prime. That was when I started playing video games. The cool thing, well, okay, it, weird thing, but m our family was really poor growing up. But my dad was always a big nerd and a huge technophile. And so the cool thing was is that by this time when the NES was in its fucking prime, the, there's the Nintendo cartoons on Saturday morning, they're making the Mario Brothers movie, you know, everybody's playing it. My dad comes home from the thrift store with a fucking ColecoVision, a fucking yeah. Intellivision, and a fucking Atari 2600, and a box of, like, 250 cartridges for all of these games. Or oh, all of yeah. Them. And so I, like, I didn't give a shit. I'm, like, five, six years old, and he comes home with it, an arcade, basically. This yeah. one, Star Wars Arcade, like, I dug through this thing, and it's, like, you know, fucking Frog Bog, and fucking Janitor Sweep, and fucking E.T., like... E.T. was I held the on worst. E I, Oh god! But I yeah. pulled out everything that had a name that I recognized. So there's like Dick Tracy was one that I remember, Indiana Jones, and fucking Star Wars Arcade. One of the games that broke fucking six year old Will's heart over and fucking <laughs> over and fucking over. So Adam talks about it being punishing. Like this was a game that like I I almost had to go to therapy because six year old Will is getting abused. <laughs> In his fucking trailer park living room by this fucking game on a black and white TV. Like, I'm like, I remember vividly, like, tears in my face because it's so hard. And I just want to play this fucking game. And it's just like, yeah, that one of the first rage inducing, sweating, teary eyes, like, I'm never playing this game again, like, was Star Wars Arcade, actually. So yeah. that's it was so really brutal. cool that you mentioned that. I, I need to go, I'm going to go drink, actually, now. <laughs> Pavlovian response. Star Wars yeah, Arcade. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had... So, my, my family used to go to um, Pizza Hut restaurants before they were just takeout places. And so, you'd go to the Pizza Hut restaurants and that's where you would have arcade games. Oh, man. And so, Pac-Man, Mrs. Pac-Man were my bag. Like, that was my yeah. shit. That was my oh, jam. Yeah. Nice. But, nice. there was one Pizza Hut restaurant that actually had the Star Wars game and I thought... Star Wars? I love Star Wars. Oh, wow. I saw it on wow. TV. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> and it was the worst experience of my life. Like, going from Pac-Man to, to Star Wars Arcade is almost exactly yeah. the same transition <laughs> as fighting your friend in the backyard and then going to war. Like, <laughs> it is such a huge departure from everything yeah. that you're used to as far as games. Oh, yeah. yeah. I and see, and that like, and, and there's nothing worse than that feeling of like, you're not getting that quarterback. That's <laughs> yeah. one gameplay yeah. somewhere else that you don't get now because you threw it away in a game like Star Wars Arcade. <laughs> I see. I couldn't. 
Yeah, I, I, I am lucky. I did get the like the last age when the, of arcades when they're at malls and things like that. So I spent an ungodly amount of money in like you know the X Men <laughs> beat 'em up. Oh, that yeah, one, yeah, that yeah. one basically robbed Simpsons. me. Like the Simpsons. Yes, yeah. yeah thank you. Um, Area Fifty One, all that stuff. Yes. But yeah, I couldn't imagine playing a game like that and actually spending money for it now like oh man that was uh that's just like you might as well have just gone outside and just thrown that quarter in the street <laughs> just like and you would and have you been would have less had, frustrated and you would have had more fun trying to retrieve it out of traffic than actually yeah. playing the game you would have right? been happy to run into pennywise yes, <laughs> after exactly. having hunt. yeah yeah uh, like the quarter? Uh, I only enjoyed it because I got to play it for free though that was, that <laughs> yeah. was the worst and I didn't I didn't play it when it came out like this is i'm talking like 10 years ago first time i played it oh wow so at that point i'm an adult i'm playing it for free in my friend's star wars room so, so now now was, you don't you're not getting that mistaken with like the the i it was i think it was also called star wars arcade but it was the one with like the stick where it starts you out like you had you it was maybe all i am getting it confused it, it all runs off of a joystick and yeah, it has it, it's like a series of set piece moments from Star Wars, like yeah. the, run, the the bombing of the Death Star, uh, Luke's fight against Boba Fett on fucking Tatooine, I think it was. Um, like there's there's several moments where it all runs on a joystick, and you have to like, um, you know, move the joystick to a certain side of the screen in order to get your lightsaber to respond. Was it anything like that? Oh, no, no, Is no, that no, no. no, okay. No, no maybe I'm it, trying to save you. It, it might be. I, I tried to save you there. Then I'm I'm sorry. Then I try. Uh, I tried to give you an out, but there there's a really kick-ass Japanese import Star Wars arcade game, uh, is which is the one I'm I'm describing, and it is it is fucking ungodly hard, but it is fucking really cool because it's first person, and it just runs you through these great moments. I'll see if I can find it. And I'll see if I can send you guys the link for it because it was cool. an an amazing arcade experience. Not, <laughs> not the original Star Wars arcade. Not that one. It was brutal, brutal and yeah. unforgiving. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, and so uh, after that, everything was uphill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> literally everything. True. So I was that's just like, "That's true, actually." So I mean, yeah. I love every Star Wars game because it's not that one. <laughs> wow. Fair enough. Really, that, that really puts a, sh a spin on it. Like, yeah, that really puts a spin on it. I'm still not forgiving Star Wars Connect though. That is unforgivable. <laughs> that's not happening that's so there. Funny. So funny. I yeah. I wish it would have been so much better. Yeah, <laughs> I still play it because, goddamn it, I bought it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it should have been better. Have well, been you gotta yeah, bring not... it to my house where my I have more light in the connect. Yeah, and pick your connect up. actually there works. Go. Yeah, because I my mine's wide, not long, and that Nico adapter, man, that's a piece of shit. We are talking about your room. Yeah. It, uh, oh no, we're talking about my dick. Oh, okay. okay. I just... I, yeah, I got a Nico adapter <laughs> for my dick. As so long you, as we're so all on the same see page, it. then yeah. So, um, that explains the white pants, then. <laughs> <laughs> the stains, the stains don't show up. You know, <laughs> it's true. Oh, it's true. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for tuning in. This was yes. Valfour. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I had an was... absolute blast. I had an absolute blast. Like I can't believe like time is flying. I don't even know if it's been like an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. It's, yeah. It was it been a, an absolute joy, an absolute blast. Well, we gotta have you come back again for some other manufactured yeah. reason because I had a lot of fun. Or, yeah, it, it doesn't even need to be a manufactured reason. You just hand me back at any time. It'd be a blast. Oh, yeah. It'd be a joy. Well, thank you for the few of you who tuned in live. We genuinely appreciate it. And, of course, your commentary is also, uh, you know, part of what makes this type of a format special. So, thank you very much. Um, ensure that if you want to keep seeing stuff like this, or if this is the first time you're seeing it and you want to see more, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that little bell icon, and you're going to get notified every time we go live. But we do have a set schedule that we're actually going to be ramping up here. So right now, the fourth Sunday of every month at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we're going live with a show. But Cameron and I are working on trying to find a little bit of extra time. And we're going to add in something. It might not be an hour, but it's going to be at least a half an hour of us coming in, talking about Star Wars news, Star Wars updates, or maybe just because we want to see each other and look and hear these dulcet tones coming out of our That's probably what it is. Or something. I don't know. What, whatever. We, we, don't, we don't get to see each other as much mm -hmm. as we should. So It's true. I mean, in our it's dreams. Just, definitely. Right. You're always yeah. there. Always there. <laughs> um, 
let us know what you guys think. If there's something that you want us to talk about, shoot us an email. Uh, what is that email? What is our email? Yeah, it's because Adam can never remember it. It's the Infernal Brotherhood, all one word, at gmail.com. Yes, that is our email. And at the very top of every show, we have a My Name is X and I'm a Scruffy Looking Nerf Herder video. You can submit yours to that same email address and we're going to feature you at the top Hell of the yeah, show. Hell yeah, we will. So we're going to have Valfar do that for us as well. So uh, look for that here coming Spoiler up. Spoiler alert! Shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're never tuning in again now. They're like, ah, oh, God, no. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can always support the channel by liking and sharing the videos. Thank you guys so much once again. And until the Infernal Brotherhood can convene again, and you can see my eyes shifting down here so I can read it, <laughs> may the force be with you. <laughs> Laugh it up, fuzzball. Princess Moon. Princess Moon.